The human race is at risk. What is important is efficiency. So what do you propose? All remaining fertile women should be collected and impregnated. By those of superior status, of course. Talking about concubines. I don't care what you want to call it. The wives would never accept it. Well, that's a non-issue. No, we won't succeed without their support, you know that. Maybe the wife should be there for the act. Handmaid's Tale is really mandatory watching for anybody who cares about the human race. And I don't say that lightly, I mean that literally. And it's because what it does is exaggerate and dramatize a lot of the most insidious and dangerous dynamics and phenomena taking place within civilization today. And by making them writ large and grotesque and vivid and terrifying, what it does is it brings them home with a sledgehammer through its stylization of characters and violence, um, along with the brilliant art direction, cinematography, and the sheer visual artistry, which is as good as Akira Kurosawa. Now, without knowing the plot, it's impossible to make head or tail of my encomium. So, in quick summary, let me just say that the Handmaid's Tale is about a theocratic society which springs up in the wake of an ecological apocalypse resulting mostly from environmental toxicity and some kind of military confrontation which has left the United States largely decimated with only two states and a new capital. Um, in the wake of this devastation, women lose all right to property, money, and their jobs, meaning that they're entirely dependent on their husbands and men. They then lose control of their bodies and the few remaining fertile women who are left are forcibly enslaved and their wombs literally pressed into servitude on behalf of the elite members of society with whom they're forced to procreate in a regime of what is tantamount to systematized rape. In order to make this whole system legitimate, a moral religious regime has been adopted in which these handmaids, these fertile women, are indoctrinated to believe that they are, they are sluts. Hours felt like, I don't know, two, maybe three at a time. I knew most of them from school. I just couldn't believe they were doing it. It was, it was actually happening. But it did happen. Didn't it? Yeah. And who led them on? <laughs> Whose fault was it? Fault was it, girls? Her fault. 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 Go on. Do it. And why did God allow such a terrible thing to happen? Teach her a lesson. Teach her a lesson. Teach her a lesson. Teach her a lesson. That obviously is very strong evocations of what's going on now with Harvey Weinstein. A problem since time immemorial, which has now actually come to light under Klieg lights for the first time ever. So there are some harrowing parallels with modern day society. That women are not permitted to own property, money, 
have jobs or even control over their bodies is obviously a parallel to many societies in India or the Middle East, and I'm sure I'm omitting others and possibly offending some people, but please forgive me. But what is more interesting is as an American enlightened female who considers herself a feminist, what The Handmaid's Tale does is shine a clean light on the institution of marriage and the convention of taking the name of our husband. Basically, in The Handmaid's Tale, these women are but biological ciphers in the cycle of procreation, who in and of themselves are valueless and whose identities are can be swapped one for another at will. Um, and But if you actually consider what happens in the institution of marriage, it's not that dissimilar. Our offspring take on the names of their fathers and that, to a large extent, determines their identity forever. And yet, we have a completely unquestioning attitude towards this type of patriarchy which is so hard-baked into Western civilization that we just accept it unthinkingly. That tendency is exacerbated and uh, worsened by the fact that men tend to replace concubines who are past their sell-by date. One wife gets swapped out for another, which is part and parcel of the name-taking convention, which I've just described, that women are interchangeable. By the way, when I watched this with my husband, who was literally very, very physically uncomfortable and who was only looking at the TV with one eye and watching a magazine with the other and losing his sex drive all the while, um, that was how physically discomfited he was by the entire thing, psychologically, physically discomfited by, by the entire thing. What was very telling was he actually said to me, I wish I knew how they got to this theocracy. What were the events? What was the lead up to this? What's the backstory behind the establishment of this theocracy? And I said, it doesn't matter. I mean, the theocracy, the elements in this story are so close to the present day that all you have to do is scratch a slightly beneath the surface to see that these insidious dynamics are omnipresent. So it doesn't bear any further explanation. It's not required. That was my response to him, that why do we need to seek and look further? Who cares about some convoluted plot line? This plot is here, right now.